What's up, everyone? Welcome to The Link Up with Letitia on Living Corporate. This podcast is for young professionals that need some real deal advice, tips, and resources to navigate corporate America and dominate their career. If you're looking to upgrade your brand, get the knowledge you need to level up professionally for your future, you are in the right place. I'm your host, Letitia Bird. So let's get into today's episode. I'm so excited to just share this very important topic with you all today. I am going to be talking about how therapy has made me a better entrepreneur, a better professional, uh, a better friend, um, and and better to myself, honestly. (laughs) So, you know, as working professionals or entrepreneurs that are highly uh, driven and ambitious, we have a hard time with giving ourselves grace. I hope that you can relate to this <laughs> because our mental health is so, so crucial to success. Having a relationship with yourself is crucial to your growth and to your development, and it will allow you to build self-awareness as you are constantly improving and working towards achieving your goals. So what I'm going to be sharing with you all is my journey with therapy, why I started going to therapy, uh, how I started going, and how it has essentially changed my life. If you follow me on Twitter, I am always talking about therapy. I love going to therapy. It's not easy now. (laughs) It's not easy. Uh, It's not like, I don't know if I would categorize or label my therapy sessions as fun, but I enjoy going because it stretches me. It makes me uncomfortable. It makes me call out the biases and and, and the lies <laughs> that I'm telling myself. Uh, so I'll start with why I started going to therapy. Actually, let me just, before I talk about why I started going to therapy, um, I want to just share that, you know, PTSD is real from working Um, as the only person of color or one of the few in a predominantly white uh, workplace. I talk to women particularly, and there's some men as well, uh, you know, black women that have been discriminated against, that are treated unfairly, that are blamed for things that they never even touched before. I've had Um, I've heard of women being, um, you know, let go for things that their coworkers maybe just got a little slap on the wrist for, you know, I I have heard stories of us feeling uncomfortable walking into work or feeling like if we share a little bit of ourselves, they will take that and use that against us. I've heard all of your stories and I, mm, It really, really hurts and it angers me to hear the experiences of the trauma, you know, that we have to deal with in the workplace. And I do think that is why going to therapy is extremely important. Know, one, that you are not alone. You are not alone in this. And it's important to have someone that you can talk to about it. Now, my personal reasons for going to therapy, I'm not going to get into too much detail as to why I started going, (laughs) but it was really for me based on some deeply rooted issues within my family that I have been experiencing and the and the trauma that I went through as a as a, a child, as a young adult in college and even, you know, Post graduation from college, and 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 hell, I'm still dealing with some. <laughs> uh, but uh, we 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 cannot, uh, you know, choose our family. But I also kind of grew up thinking, okay, well, 
your family is your family. You have to respect them. You got to just deal with them, even if it's your parent, because that's how it that's how it's supposed to be. You got to respect them. You got to, you know, and so I just thought like I had to deal with a lot of BS because they, you know, were my family members. Um, So that's why I started going to therapy just to kind of figure out, you know, how I can release some of the stress and and the the heartbreak um, that I have experienced. Um, I have a, just to share a little personal antidote, I have a a very distant relationship with with my mother um, because of a, a marriage that she's a very toxic marriage that she's been in for about 10 years. So I, I very, I rarely see her. Actually, I haven't seen her in years. Uh, honestly, I, I don't talk to her. I want to be in her life, but I have been shunned. And I grew up in a single parent household. She raised me. So that has been so hard for me to just get to, to get through. You know, I, I love her and I will be there whenever she needs me. But I realized in conversation with friends that they said, yo, your like your situation, like that's not normal and that's not OK. And we need you to, you know, really get some help. There is a stigma in the black community that if you are, you know, going to therapy, you're quote unquote crazy. <laughs> right. Or that means that something is wrong with you. But it is so important for us to, and and I'll be honest, I I thought that. I mean, it was literally ingrained in me. And so I was conditioned to think that if you go to therapy, what? What's wrong with you? You know? But (laughs) um, I've been going uh, now for, uh, let's see, starting in May. So about six months. And it's literally changed my life. So um, without further ado, let me just tell you all what I have learned from therapy. It has, one, I learned that I... Um, need to give myself more uh, grace, giving myself grace, um, and also working on self-compassion. My first therapy session, I was super nervous. I didn't know what to expect. I was like, okay, but if she doesn't like me, what if I don't like her? What if I, like, I just had no clue what to expect. (laughs) So, uh, you know, I kind of went in there and she said, well, so, you know, why, you know, why, what made you come to therapy? And I'm like, wait, what? I don't, I don't know. I'm here. And she's like, okay, well, just tell me about yourself. So that's kind of how we started. The first thing, uh, advice that I would give about going to therapy is you definitely will have to be vulnerable and, and transparent if you want to get the most out of it. Um, vulnerability is something that I also struggle with as someone that is a leader naturally have a lot of people that look up to me, my clients and friends. And so showing weakness, showing that you don't have it all together. Ooh, you can't do that. Right. I have learned though, from watching Brene Brown, I probably have talked about her a lot, um, on previous episodes, but I've learned a lot from her about vulnerability. So check out her Ted talk. She also has a Netflix special and she talks about, you know, that she talks about how vulnerability is bravery. Uh, so I'm learning to be vulnerable. But anyways, in that first session, the main thing that came out was self-compassion and having a relationship with yourself. And I did not have a relationship with myself. Like I, I, I did not. I was kind of going through the day to day, going through the motions, you know, going to my office and talking to clients and working, coming home and and working more and not really checking in with myself to actually ask myself, hey, are you happy? How are you feeling? You know, how is your energy? Right. And so um, that was the first thing I, I learned was one, I have to give myself self-compassion and, and know that one, I'm not going to be perfect. (laughs) The people around me are not going to be perfect. And see, because I did not practice self-compassion, I also wasn't compassionate with others, with my team, you know, with friends. I I didn't give other folks grace because I did not lend that to myself. So I've had to learn how to be kinder with the words that I'm speaking to myself and also make sure that I'm constantly checking in to see how I'm feeling. And if I need, maybe I'm working too hard or going too hard and I need to take a break, you know, or maybe I'm having, you know, some negative thoughts. That means that I need to take a step back and say, okay, why am I feeling this way? So it's been really interesting. You know, I, uh, I love learning more about myself. I feel like I am coming into myself and I think that becoming is, better than being. And I learned the difference between being 
and the difference between becoming. Um, I, I journal all of the time now. That took me some time to actually get used to. I mean, I've, I've journaled before in the past, like in the morning, I have a stoic journal that was gifted to me by a friend where we have guided journal, journal questions or prompts. Um, but I have uh, now transitioned more into self-reflection, journaling my emotions um, throughout the day, journaling how I feel about my relationship with myself and then with others. So I've learned to give myself self-compassion um, that has, you know, allowed me to be more compassionate with others. That's allowed me to be more empathetic. Um, the way that this has helped me to change my my life in business or business specifically is because I would go into therapy sessions. And the first thing I would say when she asked me how things are going, I would say, oh, man, you know, entrepreneurship is so hard, <laughs> which it is like real talk. Everybody knows it's hard. But I was like, man, business, running a business is just hard. Like, and she looked at me and she said, you understand that this is your business, right? Like, it's your business. This is what you wanted. This is what you signed up for. You are in control here. So I'm going to need for you to figure out why or what's making it so hard and, and go ahead and start working on making some changes. And she asked me why it was so hard. And I was telling her about the workload. And, you know, she told me how she ended up, you know, just kind of downsizing. And she thought that she wanted to grow a very large company and realized that that's not what she wanted. And it made me take a step back because I was working. I mean, if there's 24 hours in the day, your girl was working about 17, eight, 17 hours sleeping and getting up and working again, going to the office, going to meetings, speaking. You know, I also teach at a university and I mean, I would, I was driving myself crazy and I was unhappy. I was so unhappy. My team was stressed out and um, I ended up changing my whole business model because I realized that I did not want a company where I had to work myself to death and my team had to as well. So the shift that I made, I'll tell you about that. Uh, originally, um, you know, when I started my company, if you listen to the episode a couple weeks ago, I talk about how I started my company uh, where it was mostly doing resume writing and now it's shifted into career coaching. So it's pretty, I pretty much changed the business model. 75% of my business, approximately 75% is solely one-on-one -on -one career coaching and business coaching. Prior to that, and I made this shift um, a few months ago, uh, prior to that, you know, it was focused on resume makeovers, LinkedIn makeovers, interview coaching, and we had about 30 to 40 clients. Ooh, just the thought of that gives me, <laughs> just the thought of that just kind of gave me a real quick headache. Um, 30 to 40 clients a month. I, um, you know, was keeping my prices somewhat um, low so they could be competitive in the market. And, 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 and that's fine if that's how you want your business model to operate. Lower price point means more clients, right? Uh, well, I don't want to say that. That's exactly what it equates to, but that was my thought process. Um, and so we were working with about 30, 40 clients, you know, probably about 15 to 18 simultaneously. And it was hard. Like, it was very hard. I was stressed out. My team was stressed out. It was hard to keep up with everyone. And then I had to take a step back and ask myself, is this truly what I want? Is this really what I want? And sometimes you do have to do that. You know, check in with yourself regularly. And I realized that it wasn't. And so because of that, I shifted my business model to career coaching. Um, I um, had a launch strategy. I had to build a brand new website. Did that on my own, which I'm so proud of on Squarespace. Check it out, LatishaBird.com. I will probably link it in the show notes as well. Uh, and so, and I don't all, I know it's a lot of listeners out here in the tech industry. So if y'all have some tips on my site, let me know. Okay, I am not <laughs> a coder, but I worked very hard on it. So anyways, uh, I shifted my business model, had a launch strategy, and I ended up not uh, getting 15 coaching clients to start coaching with me from October to December. 
Most of them paid me up front for the three months, but I had my revenue goals and I said, if I can charge this amount, if I can hit this number of coaching clients, I'm good. And that's what I did. Everything has been so wonderful. Um, I do have a three month coaching program. So um, now I will have recurring coaching clients every quarter. So I'll have new coaching clients starting in January. So going from January to March, the next group going from April to uh, June and starting again in July and then October. I love that because I didn't have that level of organization and efficiency um, in my business the way that I have now, where before I would just enroll coaching clients whenever they wanted to start. And so now everyone is on the same schedule. They're going through the same type of information. Uh, and so it has been wonderful. I have gotten so much of my time back. And I also realized that if I am preaching to other people about just living a lifestyle that you deserve, but I'm over here stressed out, you know, I'm kind of being a hypocrite, right? And so um, I had to take a, t a tough look at myself. And um, I fundamentally decided this was the best thing for me to do. I've gotten so much time back. And because my business is now at this level of uh, you know, um, organization, I am able to focus on other areas of my life. So now I'm focused on, focused on my physical health, I'm going to the gym and eating um, healthy, still working on that. <laughs> uh, and, um, you know, I think I said my budget, so I'm try just trying to work on my finances as well. But because now I have this one area of my life in order, it has allowed me to focus on other areas um hopefully um for those business my business owners out there that are listening to this um if you don't go to therapy highly recommend it let's normalize the conversation of going to therapy let's talk about what we learn let's just all focus on mental health you know we get a lot of negative content um kind of fed to us on a daily basis and there's a lot of the you know we all kind of compare ourselves to each other on social media things of that nature, but get your mental health in order, please, because that is going to hold you back from really just being your, your foolish and truest and happiest and, and your best self. Other things that I learned from therapy outside of self-compassion, um, giving myself grace, you know, asking myself the tough questions and, and checking in with myself and making changes was, again, just taking that ownership, you know, taking that ownership and understanding that I cannot change other people. Um, I can only set boundaries. So I'm working on setting boundaries, communicating my needs and my expectations in all of my relationships. You can't control what someone else does. You, you can tell them how you want to be treated and if they act accordingly or not, then you will know what it is that you need to do. So that is my spiel. If you have any questions about therapy, let me know, um, you know, this is a, a very important just time in, in our lives as we're growing in our careers to make sure that we do have a relationship with self. If you don't have a relationship with yourself, then let's start there uh, because that's going to be, you know, the number one factor to building, as I mentioned earlier, that self-awareness. You have to know who you are what you need to work on and who you want to be so that you can know what changes are need to be met. And so that you can also know where you want to go professionally. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. Um, so I look forward to hearing your feedback and your comments about this. Um, again, therapy has changed my life. It's made me a better entrepreneur. It's made me a better friend. And I am so incredibly grateful to be on this journey. And um Really excited to share this with you all. So talk to you all next week. Living Corporate is a podcast by Living Corporate LLC. Our logo was designed by David Dawkins. Our theme music was produced by Ken Brown. Additional music production by Antoine Franklin for Musical Elevation. Post-production is handled by Jeremy Jackson. Got a topic suggestion? Email us at livingcorporatepodcast at gmail.com. You can find us online on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and living-corporate.com. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned.